don't try to please men. You'll wind up pleasing no one. Please Jehovah, and you'll please those who love Jehovah. Now, I'm going to repeat that. Because you can get back trying to please your branch committee, or if you're a circuit overseer, trying to please the district overseer. I'm not saying you shouldn't honor them. Double honor is appropriate. But give me a break. It's not about pleasing men. No, you're going to wind up pleasing no one. Please Jehovah, and that's what you live to do. You live to please Jehovah. Those that really love Jehovah, they're going to love you for trying to please Jehovah. That's, all, that's how it works, especially at your level of uh, spirituality. Jehovah's given you so much, see. But for you to make that kind of progress, uh, you have to be able to take correction. This is not easy for most people. You know, it doesn't happen a lot, but enough to where I'm telling you it happens. Does it happen with Gilead graduates? Yeah. When we had the other missionary home arrangement, oh my word. <laughs> and Brother Hurd and I were like, you got to be kidding I understood the money thing way, way back, but Jehovah took care of that. And uh, Jeff Jackson came on service committee, and he'd been missionary in Spain. So I talked to him, had them investigate, some, asked them to investigate some things, because I coordinate service committee. And they were so willing, good men, beautiful men. Anyway, uh, you take, for example, Jeff said something about those homes. It's the only setup that was democratic in this organization the way the missionary home functioned. No wonder we had problems. We're not a democracy. We're a theocracy. Yeah. So those that are in the field, you thank God. Now, there there have been some good success stories. Not a lot of them. You put humans together like that, <laughs> it's these different heads, I tell you what, doing zone visits, I said, this has got to change. One after the other, needing an appointment. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Apparently it wasn't in their Bibles. I don't know if they ripped the page out. <laughs> Somebody ripped it out of their Bible because they were not applying it. It was very, you know. So we try to love them and help them, but I, we supplicated over that, and that all ended. And it's pretty well over, and uh, it had its day. But Brother Glass, I heard him give a talk in 1971, and he was... Outstanding Gilead instructor. And I heard him in Florida say, you know, the number one problem we have in missionary homes is getting along with one another. So I'm on service committee uh, years later. Number one problem we're having in the missionary homes is them getting along with one another. Nothing had changed. See. But there are homes where there was an application of Bible principles functioned pretty good. But we, there were so many things wrong with it. They had people, you were way out in the field teaching, preaching, and you call them back for the meal because the family voted on when it's going to be, and then you got to leave your field. You know what I mean? Take a 45-minute or an hour bus trip. Have we lost our mind? Uh, to have, and then, you know, some of the home overseers, I won't say any nation... <laughs> Alexander says, you better not, or I'm, I'm going I'm to tell somebody. <laughs> I'll report you. <laughs> so, so make good use of the provisions while you're here at Bethel and the provisions you get for those that will be in the field. Uh, here you got morning worship, uh, practical direction. Uh, you know, let me just ask you this, though. Now, other than the four commentators, what was the scripture text this morning? Who remembers it? Not the comment, the scripture, chapter, verse. See, I see that. Okay, so we're not trying to embarrass you, just, isn't that interesting? Now, those that had comments, you probably remember John 6, 67, right? But do yourself a favor really observe the scripture every morning. I try to apply this all the time, even when I'm away, because God's always observing. And really burn that verse in. 
because it's about the scripture. The comments are great. You maybe heard a good comment, but meditate on it. And if you, you know, I found it you know, 10, like 20 times, I say that verse, think of the context, I own it. Very rare you're going to be able to come up to me and say, what was the scripture this morning? And I won't remember. Mm -mm. So, a friend of mine came with her to work in the service department for years. Fred Franz had just given a talk. I wanted to know about it. I knew he'd given it. Well, this Gilead couple are staying overnight with this couple because they invite us over. And my good friend that's there. So, I started to ask him about Brother Francis talk, and I love friend for Fred Francis talks, and he was deep. I wanted to hear what he had to say, and this sister wouldn't shut up. All about what she's learning at Gilead. She just would not shut up. I know she was excited, but it's like, excuse me, it wasn't my house, and the the host is not saying anything. I said, uh, excuse me, I'm glad you joined Gilead. It's exciting, but. Could you let him finish? Because I asked him about Fred Francis talking. It's starting to get later. I do want to hear it before I leave. Do you mind? Oh, all right. <laughs> so she didn't have her observation powers on. She had her mouth on. <laughs> See? So I don't know whatever happened with that girl, but God help her. Uh, somehow or another, she must have learned something some way. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. But, you know, for me personally, I think this is a gem, because in the schooling I had before being one of Jehovah's people, I could count on one hand the good teachers I had. Very few. They were all about rote, you know, memory, and they stunk. And I was so bored with most of them, and I'm like, give me a break, you know? And uh, not a pleasant student to have when I think you're an idiot. And I'm not saying I was appropriate, I was a worldly guy, and I didn't like being bored. And uh, one teacher says, you know, what's your problem? I says, you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> you're cruel, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but with Jehovah God, oh, the education. See, any of your instructors boring you here at school? I don't think so. Sisters, and I've learned a lot from the sisters, by the way, the anointed sisters now in heaven, as well as our sisters in scripture. You can learn a lot from women. And don't forget, a large chunk of the resurrected anointed were women at one time. So I always tease the sisters, you're not going to be able to say, you don't understand. Because <laughs> those resurrected kings are going to say, oh, yes, we do, honey. <laughs> And you better do what you've just been told to do. <laughs> See how wise Jehovah is? <laughs> yeah. I told one Bethel sister, I won't, she, she's a tuxedo. And I was telling her about, you know, these sisters and all the authority. And she goes, yes, whoa. And I said, calm down. <laughs> You're not in heaven. You didn't get any authority yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Except in the house. <laughs> no, she's a real good girl. Oh, boy. <laughs> the zone work, the year before we had internationals, you don't do zone work then. So I'd never done. Well, anyway, Leon wanted to interview me at the special meal. And I said, nah, Leon. I said, do you want to have a real great interview? Macumba. So get him up there. Man, he brought the house down didn't he? Because he'd been to traveling work in, uh, what was it, Tanzania? and I mean, incredible story. What a face. Face full of life's experiences. Bethelites that were right there in front of him, they were sleeping in their little hut, and he stepped over them while they were sleeping to go out in the service. Now they're at Bethel. Incredible. See, you get and him and his wife, and I don't have time now because <laughs> we're done, but what he told Nor, do you remember what he told Nor? Because he went to the 10-month Gilead without his wife. So he's getting his graduation diploma, and he says to Nor, thank you, and I miss my wife. <laughs> and then he walked off, and Nor went, hmm. <laughs> All right, nice being with you, and we'll see you February 3rd.
I miss my wife, but I'll have to wait till five. <laughs> <laughs>